this was the one which was worked out by Zwang, by Einstein and which is the many, many things he did, you know, he did the Brownian motion and Brownian diffusion, but this was the thing which was done somewhat later and it is a brilliant way that he started somehow he got into his idea to study the probability of a fluctuation and he introduced the concept that two th at, at system at equilibrium in the uh, homogeneous state, it has two independent thermodynamic variables and he worked out with uh, and it played a very important role in the later destruction uh, of hydrodynamics uh, that he for example, he took uh, temperature and pressure and worked it out and this that situation isothermal isobaric is the best way to do hydrodynamics and he also do entropy and volume these fluctuations and then he uh, found out uh, the probability of fluctuation. The way we did that he constructed a fluctuation and got the work done to this uh, create that fluctuation and from there he did the probability of fluctuation. Now, uh, why do we talk of fluctuation ok and what is the reason? We know that at equilibrium free energy free energy is minimum so um, now if the free energy is minimum then if i consider uh, if, if i exp expand free energy as a function of say density and I say my density undergoes a fluctuation around the equilibrium fluctuation. So, density is a naught sorry uh, rho average plus delta rho. Then the way one writes is that free energy a naught at equilibrium rho average. Now, the first derivative of free energy with respect to density. goes on like that. Now, this quantity which is the derivative because the free energy is minimum, this goes to 0. So, then I have and I make that delta rho, uh, change in free energy as a delta, delta rho, then this also goes out. Then I can write as the first term of this Taylor expansion as Sorry. So, this should be just derivative, partial derivative, hmm. other things kept fixed. Now, then we can say that if I want to have a uh, fluctuation, that fluctuation has this cost in uh, free energy. That means, to a small enough fluctuation, my free energy surface is harmonic. This is the rho average, ok. Is that clear? It is a very trivial logic, but at the same time it is very profound. So, these are the then we call this quantity as the force constant of the fluctuation. So, you immediately see that this is the quantity which must be positive, so that a free, there is a cost to free energy. Then if in as in phase transition or chemical reactions, if there is a barrier and then there is another state here, 
then to small we say to small fluctuations this is stable but to a large fluctuations is goes over there when it reaches there this derivative becomes uh, negative now so either it has to once it reaches there it has to come back there or come there so the equilibrium between the two such states characterized by minimum is determined by the difference in this but dynamics is profoundly dependent by the oscillations here and the curvature there okay now we do not want to talk of dynamics instead we want to talk about this quantity that uh, what is in in uh, so this is the uh, chapter you can uh, read where I talked about the fluctuations so basic idea is that that what are these uh, these uh, these fluctuations are the most important quantity because this this is the determines the response the second derivative determines the response of the system to a fluctuation how that is the called the res, uh, linear response or response functions and these response functions are the most important properties of a system like when we brought the uh, rock from the uh, moon other than the density the first thing they calculate is the specific heat actually when you go to uh, many museums they will write down the specific heat of that below and the conductivity those properties conductivity specific heat are the response functions why because if you uh, so now as i am telling you from the morning that this is a very important if i change if i want to change temperature by delta t then i have to give a amount of heat delta q and so this is the relation cp if you bring it here then delta q by delta t is the cp so specifically is the amount of heat needed to change the temperature by 1 degree that's what you have in, uh, studied in the in 8th grade at least we studied in 8th grade compressibility now i bring here dvdp then is the compressibility that means the unit pressure uh, the pressure needed to change volume everything by unit and this is the magnetic susceptibility chi it is connected to the uh, polarization or the magnetization created in the system by applying this amount of external field so every case we are applying an external perturbation here we are giving an amount of heat here we are giving an amount of pressure and here we are giving an external magnetic field on the left hand side we are having the response of the system and then these co constant coefficients are the one which gives the response the, the magnitude of the response near a phase transition these response functions all diverge then a very small amount of perturbation create a huge response right. specific it goes to infinity remember the lambda uh, curve uh, compressibility goes to zero In gas liquid transition you can compressibly so then uh, and these also diverges so stability condition of a system both mechanical this gives you the mechanical stability and this you give the thermodynamic stability both the stability are connected with this the, these quantities so whenever we talk of a system is stable or non stable there is a set of stability conditions which uh, is discussed in my book in a little later i i i'll hope to get into that so i hope i have impressed sufficient amount on you to tell how the importance of these response functions they are the most important constitutive properties of the system uh, most important constitutive properties of the system so
and the ones whenever any matter is uh, new things are created these are the first properties that one measures to characterize the system okay now so my next comment and very important comment too is that these are the quantities these response functions in addition also and this is the most fundamental relation one of the things in my book first time i have the chapter 6 i had uh, fluctuations and i said realization of the promises later my students said they know that that is a bit too much but the whole statistical mechanics is quite a formidable structure as you have seen you have to go quite a bit before you start getting the results which is somewhat different from quantum mechanics because you start with Schrodinger equation which is also a postulate and then you start getting results which are connected to spectroscopy rather, rather quickly. Uh, not in statistical mechanics here you will get a huge amount of results but you have to plow through certain amount of things. You have to understand systematically how just going to partition function is itself has this, uh, this process and uh, but then at the end of the day uh, much of uh, these for example if you are going to do soft matter uh, you are going to do phase transition you are going to do polymer uh, liquid crystals everything is nothing but statistical mechanics. So you are going to put this extra the nucleation everything. You are going to put this, but at the end of the day, you are studying phenomena. See, so I have again and again telling one thing. In chemistry, the way we do quantum, we do not study phenomena. Rarely we study phenomena. We study numbers, which are then connected to spectroscopically. So, there is a huge difference the way these two disciplines work. You go to a quantum chemistry conference here at least India, they hardly talk of they talk of formalisms, they talk of second decimal place sometimes, but they do not talk of any phenomena. Uh, uh, so their main delight is the publication in Jacks and Agavante, okay. Now so the, uh, and so the important thing at this quantity is here, my point I am going to make most important point are essentially the second derivatives of free energy specifically with respect to temperature, um, uh, this one is with respect to uh, density or number or volume and uh, susceptibility is with respect to these uh, uh, external field. So these quantity density, temperature, magnetization, uh, sorry, um, th these are external, external control parameters. We will introduce a term called order parameter little later, okay. So to summarize this part that these important things specific heat, compressibility, these things are the second derivatives of free energy, first derivative is 0 and you can easily see why because if I give a small amount of heat or small change, I put a little bit of pressure then since it is in a minimum, how much it is going to displace is determined by this quantity and then this is given by this which is a spring constant, it is a harmonic surface, it is a spring constant. This is an extremely important because these trivial, apparently trivial things are basis of theory of Landau's theory of phase transition, it is a wonderful theory that we will do. After this we will do. Uh, mo uh, monatomic gas, then we will do diatomic, then we will jump a little bit, uh, we will do both Einstein later, we will go to Mayer's theory interacting system, then we will go to Landau theory. So I will I'll do a little bit uh, back and forth kind of thing, I will not follow the textbook uh, completely. Now uh, when you write a textbook you are kind of constrained by the kind of established by Macquarie or all other people, so now okay. Now, so I am going to now do the next part. So, this quantity is a very interesting quantity now. How do I get that? Okay, this is the another very important uh, response that if I study this thing, even at equilibrium, even in the absence of an external perturbation, is the most important thing, the particles are moving. This is a very important language which our Rigo Kubo introduced called the natural motion of the system. 
the system is undergoing continuously thermal motion. That thermal motion gives you diffusion dynamics, that gives you resistivity, that also gives you specific heat. Now I am making this far reaching observation that these fluctuations contain the information of specific heat and isothermal compressibility. So natural motion of the system determines and I am telling you I cannot, uh, uh, cannot over emphasize it is so important. Here uh, my student has done these fluctuations in, um, in total energy by simulation and volume and you can see it is as I was telling in the morning they continuously fluctuate. They continuously fluctuate, they are just natural system. Remember Castellan gave a wonderful example of uh, Castellan said okay, I now and I have uh, put uh, some colored uh, liquid here which will now go into here and say this is the uh, up to this, so same level here there will be meniscus. But I make this pipe is very narrow, so this meniscus is visible in a microscope. So now I look at it through a microscope, I am a wonderful artist as you can figure out. Uh, so now this height, I call this height H. And now I plot that fun h as a function of time, I will find that it is continuously oscillating without anything, it is an equilibrium with the atmosphere. So the reason is that there is a natural motion of the system, you know, so the way that is the nature's way or the system's way to interact with the external pressure. Okay, everything is at equilibrium. So, I am in completely equilibrium, but my system is undergoing this fluctuation. So, it is very, very important to realize that this is a natural fluctuation. Okay. So, equilibrium fluctuation, well defined average values originate from thermal motion of atoms and molecules. Stressed this from my book, stressed and avoid the profound result that the response functions that I have discussed here in three things are given exactly by mean square fluctuations of respective conjugate thermodynamic properties. So I am going to now tell you what is the specific heat, how do we calculate specific heat and what is the microscopic definition and microscopic minimum meaning of the specific heat, okay. And so this is the way we remember D D T is the specific heat, okay. So I do the D D T, I go to this e, D D T I do, I bring one E, so it becomes E square, another term comes from here. But Q is again sum over e to the power minus e by kb, a, kbt. So that brings it, so Q right. So I take a derivative, it become 1 over Q square, it become 1 over Q square because it is in the denominator and then I take the derivative, it brings a EI out. And there is one EI before here, so same thing EI by KBT, so this becomes a square. Now this square but it has Q denominator, so I put the Q inside and complete the square. So that thing is just average energy square. This quantity on the other hand is this E square, KBT square and by a, it is it's the KBT square both the two places and then 1 over Q and so this quantity is nothing but E square, okay. So I have E square minus average E square, exactly. So specific heat is then this quantity. So that is why the relation that E square minus, so this is specific heat Cv, 1 over KBT square in both the two cases, I bring it upstairs, so I get KBT square CV and this square is this quantity on the left hand side. So specific heat is nothing but mean square fluctuation of energy. This very simple thing, that is what I, in my book I had the original title, 
the realization of promises. This is really such a wonderful result which nobody anticipated. That that specific it is nothing but mean square energy fluctuation. Is I, I, as I said, I cannot overemphasize the beauty and the importance of this relation. Okay. Now I uh, that I did a specific at constant volume. Now I want to do specific at constant pressure. Specific heat at constant pressure will come from a uh, our uh, NPT ensemble and H then it become E plus PV we discussed in the morning and then you can exactly play the same game and you find out that specific heat at constant A is uh, again mean square mean square fluctuation in the enthalpy okay that is CP, CP and CV can be quite different. Experimentally we work with CP, but CV is the one theoreticians work with. That reason is that the other one much in, in canonical ensemble is easier and that's what we do all the time, canonical ensemble, okay. Now I go into compressibility, again the same thing that I go to the NPD ensemble and I again do the V square delta V and you know, DVDP here, DVDP I do here by P and P here brings out a V square. So I get V square minus delta V square, which is the mean square fluctuation. Then DVDP is the mean square fluctuation in volume, and this is my compressibility. So I get the relation is that the isothermal compressibility is nothing but sigma V square, or here is the well known relation. Important thing is that isothermal compressibility is given by mean square volume fluctuation. So that's why this was given here. This is the mean square energy fluctuation. This is the mean square volume fluctuation. These are real simulations of, uh, I believe, of water. Hmm. There is reason to talk of water, and I'll talk about water in the context in a little bit in a uh, greater detail. So. So compressibility we have done, specific we have done, we have not done I. Uh, so there is an exercise that you can easily do. Uh, do this you have to do in the grand canonical. Grand canonical you have to consider, you can do exactly same game you play, same game you play, you know. Uh, but in the grand canonical, remember that we are get, screwing it up a little bit having the same notation. But grand canonical, you do, you can do the number fluctuation, right? And now you can write the compre um, uh, compressibility, isothermal compressibility as a derivative. Uh, with, see, it is dV, then you write uh, dV dP and replace V by density, N by V. And say, I want the number fluctuation, not the volume to fluctuate. Then you will get D. D A D N. that means I have a, here in density I have N instead of volume and this will be, uh, if you work it out, you will be able to get this result. The isothermal compressibility is the, is the final value is the same. You can calculate in the grand canonical, you can calculate isobaric ensemble, two different things, uh, two different way we calculate that. If we want to calculate in uh, canonical ensemble, then I just do the volume fluctuation, oh sorry, if I do NPT ensemble, I do the volume fluctuation uh, because you know canonical ensemble volume is fixed, it does not fluctuate, but in uh, uh, isothermal isobaric NPT ensemble volume fluctuates, from that fluctuation I can get the mean square fluctuation and that gives the compressibility. Uh, but if I consider that as I told you we discussed, this is difficult to do. New, uh, in a computer simulation, the N, uh, that's the Unwright Gibbs ensemble and that's the I bath that I, uh, I'm not going to go into because I'm not very really clear myself about it. So the one, one of the questions that was raised, why different ensembles have the same result, okay? The reason is the following, let me see if I, yeah, I have the graph here. The reason is the following that now let us see the relative fluctuation. So, sigma e square 
this is the width, okay. And this is also a question that was asked. So, we will come to that, we'll answer both the two questions. So, remember the, when we do, we always talk, we need to talk of the relative value. Why you have to consider relative value? That because you cannot compare 100 with 1000 and you cannot compare 1000 with 10,000. Say we want to describe the distribution of salary in a concern. Then what you have to do? You have to find out the maximum salary. Now, in concern to concern, the maximum salary is changing. If you want to start the dispersion, you should better scale by that. Make that equal to 1 and then see how the dispersion goes. Here also, so this is the relative fluctuation that we need to look into. And relative fluctuation, then sigma e squared, uh, sigma e squared is CV, cavity square. squared. So sigma e is cavity square squared by e square root. I divide by then the energy. This scales as n because this is average energy. That's an extensive property. This scales as n to the power half. Because specific it is also an extensive property. So we have root over n by n. So it scales as 1 over root n. That's true everywhere. So the scaling of fluctuations. So now if I want to compare the results of canonical and grand canonical or canonical and isothermal isobaric ensemble, then the results will be the same when the fluctuations are small. So the fluctuations are these things that is moving around here. When n goes to infinity, these fluctuations, relative fluctuations become very, very small. They, they, they goes to 0. The fluctuations go to 0 as 1 over root n. This is the reason why whatever ensemble you study, you get the same result. This is also intimately related, intimately related with the stability conditions that we will we'll, we'll discuss later.